the garden is a mess. So tonight's garden tour will be pretty interesting as I go through a lot that changed this week and um, you probably saw a couple videos potentially earlier. Um, yesterday that I was posting, we did our first farmer's market on Westminster Mass on Friday and that was a pretty good success for our first time ever doing one. Um, and we also um, got an order of our plugs in this past week and I had the week off, sort of, <laughs> mostly. And so um, we did a bunch of prep work, um, gotten them ready to go, and I have a video about the Lysianthus and the Delphiniums uh, going in. At this point in the last two or three days, I've probably planted over 600 plants, just to give you an idea, um, between veggies and flowers. So, um, and we had a yard sale uh, to top it off. So yes, everything is a bit of a mess at the moment. I've got things all over the yard, so don't mind the real look of what's going on with us. So you'll notice there's a lot less flowers out here and a lot less plants. Um, so we do have a bunch of shishitos and jalapenos, serranos, um, cayennes right here. Um, still hoping that they're gonna take off. I need to pot some of these up um, or plant them one or the other very soon. The tomatillos um, are set aside for a friend up in New Hampshire who lost all of his tomatillos during that big freeze. I'm gonna show you the damage that we have. I didn't fix it today, um, so I could make sure I got it on the video, but we will be fixing that very, very quickly. Um, and so we've got that, I've got a bunch of pots. I have the tray that I used for um, dunking the fertilizer um, or putting the fertilizer in and dunking the plugs in. I have just these two trays left of zinnias in stock that are planned to be planted in our garden. I will show you guys there's a whole bunch of um, plants left that are for sale as well. So coming in here, it is, like I said, not the cleanest. I have a lot of changeover to do this week. Um, I got a little behind this past week on. So uh, fruit trees, I might have killed them all, but that's to be expected. Um, they were kind of already dead. Um, so we have eucalyptus left in here and some marigolds um, and some apricot uh, cosmos that need to be planted. I've got some of the giant pansies and onions. I'm still planting onions. Uh, if you know me, if you watched the last couple years, I continuously plant onions. Um, we've got our peas are nice and flowering. These are the ones these pots over here are the ones that we uh, started out here in the hoop house back in early March, maybe. Um, the snapdragons are, need a lot of fertilizer and I keep forgetting to fertilize these pots, which is not ideal. Um, but uh, these are, I believe, are the apple blossom snapdragons. Um, and so we've got those. I've got poppies and larkspur. It looks like it's starting to bud more poppies, the poppies I split, which you're not supposed to do, and I know that, um, but I had to, so uh, that's an earlier video. Um, and then over here, this is the really exciting part. You'll see the alyssum uh, has self-seeded all the way through, and actually doesn't look that bad. Um, I still have the garlic chives, these are perennial, and the poppy here is a monster. I've got fever few here which is hopefully gonna bud soon. Um, and then I have my first ranunculus buds. Look at this guy, nice and big. Um, so a couple of these, Let's see if I can get you focused there. There we go, it's a decent size, nice strong stems. Um, but a couple of these have multiple buds at this point coming in kind of see down in here. Maybe you can see down in there. Um, there we go. Those are multiple buds. More here. Um, so I am really, really excited for these because I, um, this is kind of my test pilot. It's about four by four space, maybe four by three space. Um, and I wasn't sure how they would do. Um, in the hoop house, it does get kind of warm, um, but I am very, very happy with the results so far. 
let's hope they get the long stems. These stems are jumping up probably two, three inches a day right now, which is crazy. Um, we do have a shade cloth that's 40%, if I didn't say it yet. We are up here in north central Massachusetts in zone 5B. And we do use the electric heater on really, really cold nights. We brought that in for the, the frost night um, or deep freeze night we had last week. And uh, I do like to try to push my limits a little bit and how much I can get done. Um, Jay and I both have, uh, or Jay starts his new job actually on this next week, but um, I have a full-time job and it is uh, rather demanding. And so um, we are doing all of this on the side. So the other stuff I have in here are the sweet peas here. I've got a lot of good mushroom growth. Um, I've got Feverfew, I've got Lupin, I've got a Zinnia, Snapdragons, you'll see I just snipped these. I didn't snip them all because some of them I do want early blooms from. I've got some nice, really look nice looking stock. And then some Larkspur here as well. And status somewhere here. There's some status there. And there's some more status there. So we do a fertilizer regimen usually. Um, and it, it tends to be um, every, every other week I do a, or every two weeks I do a um, granular. Um, for the flowers, I did buy the down to earth um, flower fertilizer. Um, and the um, veggies, I typically do the all purpose, unless it's a specific vegetable, like a potato that needs something specific. Um, but the all-purpose from down to earth works really well. We try to do use only OMRI, organic rated um, uh, products on uh, in our garden. Um, and uh, we right now do more hand watering than I'd like to admit, but we are working on irrigation and a rain catching system. So that's a little bit about us. Um, the Some of the stuff I'll talk about when I get over to the tomatoes is what we did to prep for that deep freeze. So here are my new Lysianthus plugs. These are from Ball Seed. We have a wholesale count now. As a, now we are officially a business, we can do that. And we have um, received in three trays. There was two mostly full trays and one half tray. This is what's left at this point. And so we are really excited um, to see and do the two big testers this year were Lizzie's and Ranunculus. And I wanted to test both of them in the hoop house under shade cloth to see if that helps. Um, if I didn't say it, this is south. And so our uh, hoop house is oriented north to south so that we don't have one back side, um, a bed going there. Um, more probably dead fruit tree. <laughs> um, then I have some Celosia seeds. I don't think those are gonna come up or they might've tried to and then um, got cooked in here the, earlier last week. Um, then I have snapdragons. I've got some more peppers in here. These are the last of the delphinium plugs that I haven't planted yet. And these are going to my mother. And then here's the difference between the Lizzie's that I planted same week as they planted them for me. And then theirs. <laughs> um, so this is one of those things where I wanted to test it. I wanted to see, could I grow these successfully? And I think I can possibly get some blooms out of these. Um, hopefully a few anyways. Um, I want to get some of these colors anyway, uh, if I can. Um, but uh, definitely probably worth the money to buy the plugs if I'm going to really do this and sell them to wholesaler, uh, whole, sell them wholesale to flower florists and do subscription um, flower bouquets. So more to come on those, but uh, I took uh, I took the advice of a bunch of florists uh, or, or flower farmers and um, decided to order plugs at the same time as starting seeds. These are the leftover onions. So onions are biannual, which means they seed just like carrots and a bunch of things. Um, they'll seed the second ear, parsley I think also. Um, and so I'm actually growing these less for the seed and more for the flowers. So that's kind of exciting. I've got a uh, Torahina cherry, um, big beefs, and lots of big beefs, I think, back there, um, already in the ground. And I got 
one of these guys from my friend. It's a purple Cherokee. Um, it had, did get some frost damage. Uh, and so over at Rose Hawk Farm, um, she did do some trimming on this. I'm gonna get this in a bigger pot and fertilize very quickly. You can see the roots are very happy coming out of this plant. So it will recover fine. And then I have a Mountain Magic and a Valentine tomato. The Valentine is a grape and the Mountain Magic is a two ounce red. And I, if I didn't say it, the Torihina is a orange cherry. I am really, really behind putting the cucumbers in. They're supposed to be in this, uh, in the, uh, the hoop house here. I did get these two back here in, but part of the deal is I need to pull all the spinach and I need to pull these beets. We actually only grow the beets for the beet greens and so when they start getting big, we're not a big fan of them. And so these need to go and I'll show you outside where our next batch is also need to pull our broccoli rob um, but we have been eating broccoli off of it very often um, I'm not really a fan of this flavor of broccoli um, it's a little harsh for me um, but Jay seems to like it a lot I also have some volunteers as most gardens do especially in the hoop house where it ends up being uh, a little bit of a warmer zone um, so tomato and some marigolds in here. So I, when I pull the spinach, I will be moving both of these or all three of these. And then there, I think there's a couple others scattered in there. Um, some of them I'll leave where they are. Um, I have a, another um, short days to maturity broccoli here. This one is a Melody, I think. Melody Sweet Bunch or something like that. So I'm excited to try this one. It's doing really well in here. And I interplanted it with the onions, some, some more onions um, from last year, and the garlic. And this garlic is getting really nice and big here. The garlic in the hoop house, I think it's probably because I'm in here watering every day and I make sure to water the garlic in here, but it gets really big, which is awesome. Um, for the farmer's market, I picked a lot of the radishes that were in here. These are the last few. And I do have a recipe of radishes on our website under our blog if you're interested on how to cut the harshness of the radish down. Um, you bake them for 15 minutes with uh, olive oil, garlic, and salt and pepper. And you put them on top of a salad or pasta salad or something and it's really good. Back here, our bunching onions are really starting to take off. This was another thing that I grew for our CSA this year and um, and also the farmer's market potentially. So just a small bunch. And then I have more peas and garlic and my pansies here in the front. I think I missed the eucalyptus, but I do have eucalyptus in the flower bed as well. Um, and, it's, and I have to plant some more. So again, it's kind of messy, but make and do and good in progress. I just have to turn over the early spring bed to the summer bed now. So back out here, the garden is now just getting to the shade point of the day and it's roughly five o'clock um, and that means we've had over, it's after five now I guess, so over 12 hours of sun on all of these raised beds because we get first first sun, the solar kicks on at like 5.10. Uh, we got the hose link out. So over here in the tomato bed, this is our four eight and one birdies beds put together that we built last year. Jay went ahead and really fixed up this trellis and I don't know if I actually showed you guys much about it last time, um, but what was happening is these big posts were actually leaning in. They're concreted in so they don't need the cables out behind, but they were just not strong enough. And um, I did put the house wren box back up here and they've already made another nest in there they were going back and forth between the house on the other end so um, they will, are hanging out here again most days um, and they are going to be part of my caterpillar army um, which I'm excited about so we need to string up all the tomatoes and we waited because of the last minute deep freeze the weather changed drastically it was uh, uh, had said, you know, we were past the last frost date of May 7th. It, uh, the 15 and 14 day outlook had the lowest being 42. And it's a risk and I know the risks, 
um, but I planted my tomatoes. And so you're gonna see here that I lost some tomatoes. And so I need to pull these out. And uh, it's really interesting that, you know, some of the zinnias are, are doing absolutely fine. Um, because I plan on loss, I have a bunch of backup tomatoes, as you can see here. Um, so I need to get these put in, um, in their place. I have planted the alyssum already um, and the zinnias and so a bunch of onions all the way around. Um, the interesting part about this was for the prep, and I'll, I think I have a video that I can post uh, or clip in here. Um, we tried a new recipe from um, the, uh, kind of a garden guru down at the Good Earth, um, formerly Agway in Gardner, Mass. And um, she gave us a, a bunch of good tips on what to try. Um, and so the, we did a foliar feed the evening of the cold weather. I'm tasting bugs, it's great. <laughs> and uh, it was a micro 5000 and um, liquid humates and molasses and water and warm water. Let it sit for half an hour and then um, and then spray it. We will see how this goes. Spinach, radishes left out. This is one of the potato beds. Radishes, potato bed, covered carrots we're gonna leave out. Onions we're leaving out. And then the tomato bed here. We'll see how it goes. We put on the Micro 5000 liquid humate and molasses mixture with warm a gallon of warm water. And so we did spray everything. So we did. But the funny thing is, is I think I missed some of these because some of these tomatoes came out absolutely fine. And some of them are very, very dead right next to each other. And it's not like, you know, there was a cold pocket. Like here, you've got unhealthy, healthy, unhealthy, healthy, like, you know, dead, healthy, healthy, dead. Um, so my guess is when I was spraying, I wasn't consistently spraying all of the plants. Um, the hoops that we had on here, and I'll, sh I'll, again, I'll put some clips in there. We had to do double hoops on each side and then put the fabric over. Um, we didn't have a very heavy fabric to do for this size bed. Um, which was also part of our problem. And it got cold a lot earlier than they said it was going to be, and it stayed cold. Instead of it getting cold at four in the morning, it actually got cold at 11 p.m. Um, and our, so cold that our hoses actually froze up. So when I got up at a little before five to come out here and try to spray everything down, um, it had been cold for too long. Good morning, it's 5 a.m. Just maybe a minute or two above. Can see we get some early light and I'm half asleep right now but um yeah so we get definitely get some early light be uh, checking on the plants um, looks like we should be fine in here I'm not seeing any real frost which is good but there's no wind at the moment um, check on these tomatoes as well Everything will be looking okay now, and this is the part that's really scary, is it all looks good, but later to this afternoon, this evening, or tomorrow, that's when you really start seeing a lot of the damage. Here. Also gotta, it's early enough, I have to watch out for, uh, some animals <laughs> um, 
we do have a large bear who's been hanging out. All the garlic. All right, so I'm gonna take this sprinkler and I'm gonna put it up on the flowers up there. And so the, with the hoses all locked up, it was not much I could do. But yeah, I mean, you can see healthy and dead tomatoes right next to each other. So that's really my only guess is that um, that uh, fertilizer really worked well and I just didn't spray well. Um, so I was bound to have lost. So um, I'm in some ways a lot luckier than others, even with some of this loss. And it's a risk that I play with um, knowing that I do have some backup tomatoes. Uh, there was no real frost on any of our vehicles. There was just a deep freeze. All right, so over here in this short <laughs> birdies eight and one, I'm laughing because in that back corner, you can see that there's kind of like these two little mounds here and here, or little divots. Um, two tur turkeys, or maybe the same turkey, bedded down into the back of the bed. So I just went ahead and replanted that um, this afternoon. Back here in the whiskey barrels, and actually behind it, um, let me start there. Um, Jay took the tractor and was able to help me clean up a lot of the old um, knotweed, I think. I get them confused. One of them is the knotweed and, the, and what the other one is. But um, they also actually got hit by the frost pretty bad, which is not really breaking my heart because there's no way to get rid of these. Um, so we need to come in and put a whole bunch of more mulch over here. Um, we did lay some more mulch in a couple of the lighter spots areas. Um, but that will uh, eventually get taken over again by the, by the big plants. I wish they were not so invasive. Um, I also dumped a bunch of mulch here and I'm gonna actually put compost on top of that to try to build that soil up. And then I'm gonna seed this whole area, I think, with the cosmos. Uh, and so um, that will be really fun. Maybe some other things will go in there as well. I might do some of the decorative grasses on that berm as also. So this is looking a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer, um, and I still need to clean up all those pots. Over here in this whiskey barrel, I've got Status Cosmos Delphiniums. Delphiniums will not bloom, I don't believe, in this bed until next year. And I have a butterfly weed as well. And then over here, I haven't planted this one because look at all my baby snapdragons. And I'm really happy because I um, these self-seeded from last year. This was a snapdragon mostly bed. Um, but I lost two trays of snaps uh, when the little green greenhouse um, it got a big gust of wind. It knocked a couple things. It didn't blow away or anything. It just knocked a couple trays on the ground um, a while back, maybe a month ago. And so um, I will actually transplant all of these very soon, probably this week. They're looking to be almost, almost size here. So um, this will give me the snapdragons that I am missing. Coming back, you're gonna see more damage on our potatoes. So I was going to clean this up again today, but um, wanted to do the video first. This is uh, not the end of the world. It may stunt some of the growth of the potatoes. So I was still planning on doing some grow bags. I might just throw together a few more extra grow bags of potatoes this year. Um, but these are not dead we're fine so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trim off about right here um, where the damage is and then I'm gonna fertilize these really well and it's again I sprayed these um, really quickly and I'm guessing this is the side I sprayed because this is the side that's doing better but maybe not um, it's a, it was a big run around trying to get it all done the potatoes are growing underground so that they're not gonna be hurt it's just might limit um, how much they actually produce. Over here, we have our carrots. These were the pelleted seeds. You can see they're nicely spaced. I highly recommend that. Um, they've done really, really well. And I also have um, the peppers. These are the red picnics and orange picnics and yellow picnics um, ready to be planted in here. But this back bed is not planted yet, just onions around the edge and then a bunch of onions, I think Patterson there, and then I have Lizzie's and some onions in this bed. This 
bed here is half onions with a bunch of lettuce interplanted. And I keep on transplanting more in um, as I germinate more and some kale. And so I'm trying to interplanting this year to see how that works. I've done the interplanting some, but not to that type of scale. So um, that's gonna be fun. And over on, then I have a section of flowers, snapdragons and status and some feverfew some cosmos that got definitely got hit a little bit here um, and then I have uh, this is the um, the mini broccoli melody um, so we'll see this definitely got hit um, but should be fine and this one and I have a parsley ready to get put in this bed moving over this is going to be the bell pepper bed. I've moved things around again, so if you continue to watch, you'll see I keep on uh, rotating depending on what's going on in the beds. Um, so this bed will be uh, all of the um, sweet bell peppers, mostly California Wonder. You'll see I do prune my, my peppers pretty drastically to get them nice and tall and very thick stemmed. And um, then I've got the ace, which are a little bit behind. Um, and some, um, this is staged here because this will be going in the spinach bed. Um, these are the El Edens and, oh, sorry, I should say, they, these are the Guajillos and the Poblanos. Um, I've got a Trident, um, Ancho, which is a Poblano, a, um, a Baron, which is a Poblano, El Eden, which is the Guajillos here. Um, so... This bed was the, hey, I don't need this bed for another few weeks. Let's get some baby spinach. And we have quite a bit. So I'm, I'm loving my spinach salads every day or spinach, and I put spinach in my wraps for lunch every day. Uh, and so um, this has been really great. Uh, and so this bed is going to be where we're gonna get our spinach now that I'm getting um, everything out of the hoop house. I did pick a little bit on the corner here, so you might see it got kind of messy. Um, that was me. <laughs> um, back, back here we have a bunch of radishes. This is a nine and one, similar to the one next to it, uh, Birdie's bed. Um, these again, I said, hey, my peppers are way too small. I'm not going to get them in the ground as early, and so um, these are just kind of minding their time. Um, so maybe we'll have some. Some more baby radishes before um, I plant all of these little tiny, tiny cayennes. So this bed will be mostly cayennes. Um, we are going to do shishitos, jalapenos, serranos, and two types of Thai chilies in uh, grow bags this year due to space. This is the other potato bed. This one got hit a little bit harder. And um, we did have, again, hoops on these with the ag cloth, but it was just too light of an ag cloth. We should have probably put a, a lot heavier stuff on it. So I have a lot of cleanup to do over there. And then here's the, what's left of the radish bed after I picked uh, quite a bit for the farmer's market. So you can see um, some of these are, are really close to being ready. Um, if, if you pick them a little bit smaller, they will be less harsh, as well as, uh, like I said, you can, you can cook them, you can saute them, you can bake them, all sorts of things. This is our lettuce bed, and I've been having something get into this bed most nights, which has been driving me nuts, but um, we have um, some nice lettuce here that we're working on, and some more broccoli rabe. Now we are at the tunnel, so we've made our way across the gardens. And at, over here at the tunnel, we have a bunch of onions, which you probably already saw. And um, then I have interplanted a few things because a bunch of things got taken out. Um, more marigold issues here. Um, uh, snapdragons in here. Um, the ranunculus uh, isn't doing that great, but actually one of these looks like it's budding, which is crazy to me because this got that 90 degree heat for a couple days. I thought they were done and you can see most of them really were. Um, so because the ranunculus were dying back, I added in basil and snapdragons and status. I've got sweet peas here that keep getting eaten um, and uh, probably deer, um, but 
yeah, this is going to be like a little mini ranunculus, I think. Look at that tiny, tiny bed, uh, bud here. Um, so that's kind of funny for me. Um, and more sweet peas back here. More onion status, more snaps. And then here's our beet greens that I have left. And within the beet greens, I actually did plant some of these little tiny baby snapdragons um, and some of the status because these won't stay through beet stage. And then I have a butterfly weed here on the end and this marigold seemed to make it through. And then over here on this side of the cage, I have the sweet peas, which are for cut flowers, not for eating. I'm gonna have to put like a sign up for Jace. A lot to go through today. I forgot how long these garden tours can be. Um, so on the back of this side, they are all edible peas, which is a good thing. I need to go through and plant beans and cucumbers and um, a few other things, I think. I might do the baby, um, the gourd pumpkins, the cute decorative ones there. Um, the zinnias in the bed did get take a hit. Um, and the butterfly weed was absolutely fine. Onions are fine. Um, let's see, I've got something digging in the bed here. Um, and I did um, throw down some dill seed to interplant in here. Um, so that'll be good. And I added in some basil back here. And there's some dill from earlier when I planted it in the back there. And um, we make our own homemade ranch all the time. Um, so dill's a big, a big use item. Um, you can see here the peas that have been eaten um, all the way to the dirt on this side. So those are the birdies beds um, over here. I want to plant cosmos over here and I need to clean up um, the grow bags. And then I have a bunch of the wildflowers and some of the seeds that I put down for cut flowers. Um, and I still don't know what this, this one is. So if you know what this is, please let me know. I'm very curious of maybe trying to use it for cups. Um, then I have the goldenrod, which actually is a big cut flower filler, which I thought was interesting. Um, and then I have over here a bunch of the field penny crests. But these are really fun for cut flowers. I don't love the smell of them, um, but they do wonders in bouquets. So I'm excited to use those more. And you can see over here on that berm, I have a ton of it. So this was supposed to be get, getting planted on that berm, but um, I'm not sure we'll get to that this, this year or not. So out here, um, the previous video you'll see, um, uh, two videos I guess ago, um, had a uh, Jace putting the burn holes and putting that tarp down, um, the woven fabric down on that last till road. We actually did add, um, he added some more compost onto it on top of the compost that was there um, to mound it up a little bit more for me too. Um, and I planted the, I fixed any holes of things that had gotten eaten or died within um, this first row. And the second row, I planted the entire row yesterday. And then the third row, I planted maybe, I don't know, you can see the, the end here is Lizzie's and that end is Zinnia's. I just planted that this afternoon and I seeded some sunflowers on the inside of this row. I need to put something that deer won't like on the outside of that row. So, going through what I have out here in the cut flower garden, I have the poppies you're not supposed to transplant. I'm saying that very clearly so everyone knows I know, I know I'm not supposed to do it, but I did do it. Um, I've got dianthus, which are kind of like the carnations. Um, straw flowers here. And I've got uh, the uh, larkspur here. And celosia some more dianthus and uh, different colors, slosias sprinkled in here. Cap over here. Um, there's some more slosia, more cabanula, and actually some amaranth that self-seeded. You'll see these little red guys going through here. And then some lizzies that filled some holes 
and then this end is really mostly status. Over here, these are all my Lizzie's, or not all, but these are a big chunk of them. There's three different colors. There's a really dark purple called Sapphire. There's a blue mist, which is like a purple with white. And there is a pink as well. And then I've got some asters in here, some more dianthus, like carnation-y type things. And then over on this end, mostly stock and some celosia, the rain, which is like a red brain kind of coloring um, as a filler here. And then this row ended up being a little bit bigger, which didn't break my heart. Um, so there's actually six across instead of five across, like over there. And there starts with mostly my Lysianthus. And then this back section here is um, some pro cut sunflower seeds. And then I have some empty space here. Because um, I will do some more later zinnias also, and I need to actually plant, transplant in some more of the red zinnias that I didn't do yet. Um, and these are in color blocks um, this year instead of doing the mixes, which will hopefully make it easier for cutting. The garlic is doing really well, and I planted some tomatillos at the ends of these first two rows. They do have a little bit of yellowing at the end of the leaf, this could be for a couple different reasons. Um, most likely water, but we did just get an inch and a half of rain uh, yesterday and last night. So, um, and I, with, I turned up the irrigation and put that on a little bit more. And so at this point, they're doing a, a lot better, less yellows than they had a, a couple weeks ago. And tomatillos, if you do plant them, you need to have two plants, which for me means that I need to have five plants or so to make sure that I have two plants because last year a couple of them got eaten and then I was ended up with this one huge one and I had to start a second one from seed because I couldn't find any anywhere, which was a big pain. Over here, the onions did not do very well, so I need to figure that out. Um, and we'll see if they start taking off this week and I need to plant more. Um, this back half from here back across all of these rows, it's corn. Um, the corn is not up yet. And then over here, I have um, squash hills, uh, summers. Some of them got hit, but not all of them. And I'm guessing that's because of spraying um, that fertilizer. But it's really interesting. I would have expected those to be completely gone. Um, and I do have Oh, here you go. I do have some of the new growth coming up here. Um, so we'll see how, how those come. Um, there's pumpkins eating. These are all eating things. Um, pumpkins and butternut squash and uh, summer squash, I think mostly in this area. Um, and then I have the first of the sunflowers are up here along with my baby deer that keeps walking through our yard. And so you can see some more sunflowers here. Um, we really need to come back in this week and weed these aisles and get that tarp down like we had last year. It will save us a lot of work and effort. Um, so that is a big, big thing on the list, a big, becoming more, a big thing on our list, becoming more of a priority at this point. Here is my monster delphinium patch. I planted these close on purpose. I'm um, pushing some moments here because I didn't want to um, get rid of any of these. I didn't want to uh, pot them at the same time. Um, and so uh, these will probably get some of them moved out um, in the fall to a new location, but I don't have the bed space set up right now. My mom sat down some of her rhubarb and the little one next to it is the one that I planted from seed two years ago. <laughs> so um, that's kind of fun. And our asparagus patch is doing pretty well and thankfully did not get hit um, with the frost very bad at all. 
Over here, I've got some asters. I did throw a bunch of seed in the back. I threw dill along the whole back wall as well. And I've got thistle planted now. I have my peonies that the ants are working away on. They're a little bit small budded, but they're pretty tall, which is really nice. Um, this is a second year peony and um, you're not really supposed to plant, well, you're not supposed to use them for cuttings until the third year or so, unless you have a bigger plant. I bought a bigger plant last, uh, whenever it was, the first year. Um, and so uh, it should be fine to use one third of the blooms. So I'll be able to use at least one of these buds here. Hollyhock, butterfly bush, uh, lupin, feverfew, uh, I think that's echinacea there, sedum. This yellow one is from my mom's garden. I stripped the roots and I have this, uh, it's a um, spider wart. It's like a clumping spider wart. I have sprinkled it through this garden area. It's not for cuttings. I've got the Shasta daisies. I've got yarrow, bee balm, bearded irises, and then this cool bronze fennel that I was excited to use as a potential greenery. I've got tansy, I've got basil, more sedum. I've got these little walkways that I'm making um, in here. I've got uh, gumfrina and um, ch Chinese forget-me-nots, I think those are. Um, more sedum and uh, I can't remember the name of this one. I think Emma gave it to me from Rose Hawk Farm last year. Uh, Sorel maybe? Um, and then I've got up here, I've got the salvia, um, hollyhock, and some bee balm, and some uh, goldenrod, um, lavender, and celosia and gumfrina, and feverfew, oregano, sedum, um, the uh, Agatache, Agatash. I'm not sure how to say that one. Um, uh, these are kind of fun. And then I ha have put some snaps in here. Actually, no, those aren't snaps. Those are um, a filler flower, and I can't remember the name. Um, back here, I have finally a bunch of seeds coming up. Um, I've been really trying to do better on the sprinkler. So we'll see how those come do. And then I have the glads so that you can see on the back there. And then my bearded irises are about ready here to be picked, which I'm excited about. And then I've got a whole section of the carnations of Dian Dianthus and uh, another thistle. I have the blue and the silver thistle and more sedum. And then I've got the spiria, or sp spicata, whatever it's called. Um, and uh, then some more irises here as well. And more glads in the back. And I think that's a mullen. And just kind of sounds, seems monster to this year. So this garden is really filling in. I still have a few more things I need to direct seed. I just need the space. Um, and so I'm trying to make sure that I can actually, due to this being a perennial and a cut flower garden, I'm trying to make sure I have the walkways. So I may grab some boards from the mill um, out back and uh, make sure that my, my walkways are clear um, once I start seeding more things. So that was a monster garden tour. Um, and I know these will get a little bit longer to going forward as well. So what I'm going to do is um, after this one, I will start splitting them up into the different sections of the gardens. I've got the cut flowers and the perennial garden I'll probably combine. And then I will actually put the field garden with the birdies beds and I'll do the hoop house by itself um, as a combination of flowers and veggies. But I really appreciate everybody watching. I hope um, you're guys all fared well with the um, cold weather we had um, or maybe you, you you got to miss it completely and I will um, 
uh, hopefully be able to add some more value to you guys on how I'm fixing some of these plants um, going forward. So I will try to capture that. I also recently got asked for a video on the pros and the cons of raised bed gardening, not just the birdies beds or metal beds, but just general that um, raised beds. So I'm putting that, uh, that together and I will try to um, get that done this week. If you guys have any special requests for things for me to go over or things that you want to see close uh, more detail, please let me know. And if this video um, was enjoyable or you learned something, please give me the thumbs up and hit subscribe if you haven't already. I really greatly appreciate every one of you. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful week.